When I was 12, I lived on the outskirts of town. On the end of my block was a large cemetery. My friends and I always talked about going there late at night, and one night we actually did. We all met up at Jake's house. There was three of us, Jake, Josh, and myself. We had our flashlights and one of those old camcorders. It was a quiet night, and we snuck out of the house and walked towards the cemetery. The cemetery was locked but wasn't guarded. There was a part of the gated off area that the ground was a little higher up on, and we were able to climb the fence and get into the graveyard from there. It was approaching 11.30 and was super quiet. We walked around for a while and it was pretty uneventful, although it was creepy. We were shining our lights on what looked like an expensive gravestone when out of the corner of Jake's eye, he saw something move. Josh thought he saw something too, but I didn't notice anything. We shined the flashlights in the area, but didn't find anything, so we just kept walking. It was getting boring, so we decided to check out one last area before we left. We were looking at a row of what looked like children gravestones when we heard a noise coming from our right. Jake, did you hear that? Yeah. Slowly, let's all shine our flashlights in that direction. On a count of three. One. Two. We all turned and shined our flashlights in the direction of the noise. And there was a man. A dirty man staring back at us. He had an evil look on his face. I couldn't tell if he was homeless or what, but he did not look like a nice person. We just stood there staring at each other for what felt like 5 minutes, but it was probably only 30 seconds. We slowly backed up, and that's when it happened. He started screaming on the top of his lungs and running towards us. We all turned around at once and ended up tripping over each other. He was now gaining on us. We got back up and started running, but by this point we were all turned around and in the confusion had no idea where the lower part of the fence was. This caused us to split up, which was scary as shit. It's roughly 20 minutes after we ran from him and split up when I hear Jake scream. It sounded like it was coming from the other end of the cemetery. All of a sudden I see Josh bolting it in that direction with something in his hand. So I follow suit. We run over to the screams and the man is dragging Jake by the leg, pulling him as Jake screams on top of his lungs, grabbing at everything. Just when we reached them, Josh swung something and hit the crazy man. I later found out that it was a piece of a tree that broke while Josh was hiding in it. The man fell down and we bolted all together. At that point, Josh knew where we needed to go, so we followed him and got to the fence and jumped over. We ran back to my house, stuck in the window, and locked it. We don't know what the man wanted, or who he even was, but we're never going by the cemetery ever again, even if we have to take the long way to school. This past weekend, my soon-to-be wife Alexa and I were settled down for a night of movies, pizza, and cuddling. We live in a residential area right outside of town. Our home is situated right against the street. Our home is situated across the street from a Presbyterian church with a large cemetery behind it. Most of our neighbors don't own pets, but there's one particular across the street and downwards a bit that owns perhaps the loudest, most annoying dog ever to exist. Quite an annoyance on a night like tonight, but luckily, it was quiet for the entire evening. It's around a quarter after 10 p.m., and we are laying down watching a film in our living room when the loudest dog on earth begins to go off. Unfortunately, there's nothing much we can do except maybe confront our neighbor or file a noise complaint, but who wants to be that neighbor that does that? After about five minutes, I get off the couch and decide to walk over to our neighbor's home and say something about the dog. As I headed outside and made it to their driveway, unfortunately, I noticed the neighbor wasn't home. Their only car was not there. I decided to walk up and ring the doorbell anyways. After a minute with no one answering, I gave up and headed back towards home. 
I noticed Alexa had stepped outside and was looking towards the direction of the barking. I told her no one was home and that we should just either ignore it or finally file a complaint. No one should have to deal with a loud dog at night, especially if you're trying to unwind after a long day at work or trying to get some sleep. Alexa and I head back inside for a bit and finally after 10 minutes the dog ceases to bark. Alexa and I exhale and laughed a bit before continuing our film. But of course not long after the dog starts up again. This time it sounded vicious. I got up went outside and approached our neighbor's fenced off backyard and saw the dog who must have heard or saw me coming. It stopped barking walked up to me and began to pant in the cute way dogs do. I chuckled and said the dog's name to which it looked at me and sat down. Such a good animal even if he's so loud. I then heard something that sounded like someone walking through the leaves coming from behind me and to the right. I turned around to see someone looking at me from behind a gravestone in the cemetery. The dog must have heard this as well. It sprung up and began to bark in the direction of the gravestone. I looked on as the person continued staring in my direction. As the dog continued to bark, I looked towards my house where I saw Alexa standing next to her car looking at me with a confused look on her face. I looked in horror as I saw the person reveal himself from behind the gravestone. His forehead and cheek were stained with red blood dripping down from his chin. In his hand was some sort of dagger. The dog began to go ballistic as the person took a few steps in our direction before stopping. I turned to the dog then back at my home. Alexa, who was still outside, yelled out to me, asking what was wrong. I told her to call the police. She said, why, the dog? To which I replied, he's fucking armed. Probably confused, Alexa went inside to grab her phone as I continued to watch the person who now began to back off, the dog now going berserk. It was going to take a bit of time for the police to reach my home, so I readied myself to go in self-defense mode as I watched the man finally turn around and walk away towards the back of the cemetery and towards the woods. When the police arrived, the person was long gone and I was stuck there explaining to a couple of skeptical officers about my encounter. They didn't seem to take me seriously, but investigated the area as I explained to Alexa about the person I saw. When the police left after finding no trace of anyone, Alexa and I didn't feel much better. We locked our doors and windows and decided to call our neighbors to fill them in on everything before heading back to continue our movie night in spectacular fashion with the exorcist. To start this off, I'm a 19 year old female and my friend is 18 and also female. This spring, my friend and I decided to go to the cemetery during the bright day to collect sweets in our country, there is a custom. After Easter, many people go clean the graves of their deceased relatives, and to honor the memory of them, we put sweets and other products. Other people can come to the cemetery and just pick up what lies on the graves, and thus also honor the memory of these people. That is what me and my friend decided to do. And about a half hour passed without any trouble. All of a sudden, we see a quite drunk man, somewhere around his 60s or 70s, which was heading in our direction. He said he couldn't find his bike and had a bag of candy we assumed he had stolen. Then he for some reason gave us a small bag of sweets which he collected. We decided to continue the search for sweets and went further into the cemetery. After a while we noticed the same man was following us at some distance. At first we thought he was just looking for candy too like us. But after a while, it was noticeable that he was following us. After a while, he caught up to us and decided to start a conversation. First, he asked us how old we were. My friend and I look younger than we really are, so we decided to say we were 15 years old for some reason, and he believed us. Then he began to ask us about our personal life, paying extra attention to my friend. Said he wasn't going to rape us, asked my friend if she's ever been with a guy at all. Then he decided to take more decisive action and tried to hug us both at once. We almost ran ahead of him trying to avoid this. 
Up to that point, my friend was answering very politely, but now she was scared, and I was super annoyed and was talking rudely, which is very unlike me. I said I didn't want him to go with us, but the strange man wouldn't listen. Fortunately, he saw someone that he knew and went with them. My best friend and I decided to run away from him, and we got away. We walked around the cemetery again for a while, constantly looking around, but never saw him again. Okay, so let's get this straight. I'm a 15-year-old girl who lives in New Zealand. Back when this took place, I was around 12 years old. In 2016, a couple days before Christmas, the worst thing happened to us. We found out that my auntie died, which is on my dad's side of the family, and they were very close. She was a jockey and fell off her horse, and it crushed her. Her favorite thing was to smell lilies. This will be useful later. Anyway, after about two years after her death, we visited her grave again for Christmas, and have been here to see her many times, but this time felt different in a way. The air was heavy and I got a wave of dread. It was so overwhelming that I had to stay in the car for a bit. Once I thought the bad feeling had calmed down, I decided to hop out and look around the cemetery. As I was doing so, I smelled a familiar smell, like the smell of lilies, and at first it was comforting in a way, but then I felt like I was being watched, but like whatever was watching me didn't want me to be there. So I listened to my gut feeling and booked it back to the rest of my family. Not shortly after, once all of us were in the car driving back, we saw that there was something in the middle of the road. So we stopped, but the longer we stared at it, the more we realized it was my auntie and she looked worried. And about two seconds later, a car comes flying by in full speed and then she disappears. I'll tell you now that it scares me and I couldn't sleep that night. The longer I thought about it, I realized that she saved us that day and she was looking out for us. We would have got hit by that car.